Good to see everybody. Great to be back. Um, you know, thinking about coming to see you here today, um, you start reflecting back, and it's amazing that we're starting year three and had spring practice number one for, for year three of being here um, yesterday. And it, it's really flown by. It feels like it was just yesterday that, that Shane called and offered me the opportunity to come here and, and how excited our family was about that. And I remember driving over on New Year's Day. And it was like an eight, eight and a half hour drive from Memphis, I guess. And the phone rings and it's Ray Tanner welcoming me on board and, and um, just the things he had to say, making you feel really good, getting started. Uh, and what a class act uh, I thought that was that, that he took the time to do that. And, and here we are uh, starting year three. Um, you look back to year one, 2021 20, season, and I still think that was one of the great coaching jobs uh, by Shane Beamer and, and, and by our staff. Um, I know a lot of people were predicting we were going to win two or three games that year. And to win seven, to, uh, to go to and, and win a bowl game, um, that was that was a challenging year. I just I just read uh, that vinyl records have surpassed CDs and sales again because everybody's going back and listening to records. And and one of my I still have a lot of CDs. I know that probably doesn't shock you guys, but um, and one of them I have is called uh, it's Paul Simon's greatest hits. It's called Negotiations and Love Songs, and that's what 2021 was to me because we had to infuse love back into these guys and get them to love what they were doing, love playing the game again. And then there was definitely some negotiation going on to try to, to get them to do it the way we wanted them to do it. And, and it all worked out and, and uh, it started uh, a nice trajectory for us. Um, last year was certainly better and, and we liked the results, although we're never totally satisfied with the results. Um, but there were still some challenges uh, along the way, and you still had some guys that were maybe a little bit more intent on doing things their way than our way um, that, uh, that, that presented some challenges. But now here we are in year three, and uh, you really feel like we've got that critical mass of guys that uh, really want to be here, and, and, and they're, they're likable, they're fun to work with every day. Um, and that, that group is just growing and growing. And, and obviously there's an awful lot of new faces to it. There's a lot of unknowns about it. Um, but you do feel like they really want to be here. And, uh, if, if I was an alum, if I was a donor, I feel like these are the kind of guys that, uh, that I would want representing my university, uh, because, they're playing for the for the block C on the side of their helmet. They're they're playing for the Carolina on the front of their on the front of their jersey, and um, and it, it becomes a pleasure to come to work every day when you have guys like that around. Um, it's it's really not year to year anymore in in college football. It's semester to semester, and I, I don't know the exact number of new players that we have, but it's it's significant. Um, you know, you're out there yesterday, and who's changed jersey numbers? Uh, you have new players and, and new numbers and guys you, you, you're working with without pads on uh, before spring break and now they get their helmet on. And um, so that's, that's the, the fun part of this, but it, it, does, it does turn over uh, more quickly with the freshmen that enroll early, the, the transfers that join in, in January. And I think Shane continues to do a really good job of, of managing it all uh, through this whole evolution. And, and two key guys that, uh, that I think probably don't get as much praise as they deserve uh, that, that we really entrust the kids to an awful lot in, in January, February, and March is, is Luke Day, our strength coach, and his staff. And then Derek Moore, who oversees player development, character development. Uh, while we're on the road recruiting, uh, while we're doing a lot of our, our meetings and, and uh, getting new analysts and GAs up to speed and all those things before we hit the field for spring practice, you know, you're really counting on Luke 
uh, and Derek and, and other people that work with them to, to spend a lot of important time with the team. And I, I think those two guys and the people that help them are really uh, secret weapons for us and, and love working with those guys every day. So I'm going to preempt this. I know you guys are going to ask me about new nicknames for, for the guys. So let me, let me throw a couple of them out there for you. Just, um, so all of a sudden, we have a lot of Nickies on our team. So that's like me being in the old neighborhood on Staten Island. You know, we got Big Nicky, we got Little Nicky, we got Medium Nicky, we got Nicky Bag of Donuts, we got Nicky Potato Salad. You know, we got a bunch of Nickies. So all of a sudden we went from one or two Nickies to like four or five Nickies right now. So that's, that's good. That, 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 that brings the New Yorker out in me um, from time to time when I see those guys. And, and one of them actually is from New York, Nick Gargiulo. Um, one of my paisans from from up in Yonkers, um, and we've got we've got Trey Fort Knox who's joined us. Uh, what a great kid he is, and and uh, excited about uh, his his leadership ability. I had to explain to Lenora Sellers the other day who Peter Sellers was, the Pink Panther. So that's a project for him. In addition to the classes that he's in, he's got to go back and and watch some of uh, the Pink Panther movies. And then for you 80s buffs, we've got Josh Simon and Simon. All right, uh, he, he's, he's, uh, he's like two detectives, okay? But looking forward to doing my part uh, to help bring this team together and, and work with these guys. Um, something, you know, things pop into your head from flashback stuff. And, and, and the other day, for some reason, I was thinking about this old war movie called The Devil's Brigade. It's not, it's not a like elite war movie. It's not Saving Private Ryan or something like that, but it's a good one. And, um, and, and the premise of this movie, uh, William Holden is, is the, uh, the lead actor. Uh, Cliff Roberts is in it, Carol O'Connor's in it, some good actors in it. But the premise of this thing is you've got this kind of misfit group of Americans um, hustlers and drunks and, you know, mischievous guys, guys that have been kicked out of this unit and that unit. Um, and, and they come together with this really polished group of Canadian commandos who are battle tested and, you know, they've had their butts kicked a few times and, and they're really highly disciplined and well-trained. And, and somehow this group's got to come together and get forged into this elite fighting force um, at a critical point in, in World War II. So it's a little bit of Hollywood, but it's based on a true story. And uh, you, you can imagine how the story goes. But, but anyway, that, that's kind of where we're at right now with this group, right? You've got a lot of new faces. You've got new moving parts. You've got some youth. You've got some guys who have sort of taken a journey to get here. You've also got some guys that have been through a lot of battles with us already in the last two years. And now we've got to pull this all together, figure out what we've got, develop the leadership in the group, um, and, and, and try to put our best foot forward uh, come August. So looking forward to, to that challenge and uh, was excited how these guys started off yesterday. Very excited to have our three starting specialists back. And uh, what a great group we have in that room. Um, and to see those guys continue to grow and develop and get to a point now where they're starting to be leaders on our team, um, that's been, been really, really impressive to see. And uh, uh, they're a focus group. They're a humble group. They, they don't take things for granted. Um, when we talk about things that they need to work on on their own before we get back together, you know, they take that stuff to heart and... Um, it was it was a lot of fun to hit the field with them yesterday. So, um, and I know we're we're pleased with what we did last season, right? We're we're not going to ignore the success that we had because that's that's the great foundation to keep building upon. But but really, when you when you get to the nitty gritty of it, uh, we've still got a lot of work to do. We've got to become more fluent and more thorough. Um, as to why we do what we do and, and being able to really learn this stuff in the meeting room, really learn it on the field and then take it out and, and apply it on the field. Um, you know, all the, the successful fakes and, and some of the, 
uh, aggressive things that we do in our mindset on special teams. Those things are awesome, and we don't want to change those, and we want to keep uh, attacking and, and, and hopefully causing uh, consternation for people with that. But that, that's sort of the scheme stuff. The, the, the core of what we do, the fundamentals of it, and the, the system, that's where we have to develop a greater understanding, and and it's gotta it's gotta seep through to to all levels of guys in that room because we got to that bowl game last year and we had new players and new spots and and at times we got a little bit exposed. Our depth got a little bit exposed. Uh, we got a little tired, and some of our decision making wasn't great. You know, even right down to the end of the game, we get a kickoff return out to the 41 yard line that gets called back by a penalty that was very much avoidable, and we end up starting that drive inside our own 20-yard line. So you, you can definitely find plenty of places where, where we need to, uh, to become smarter, uh, more reliable, more trustworthy, and, and sort of a deeper uh, in, in terms of the guys that we can put in the game on our roster. And then the last thing is, is just me and my mindset. And, and I've told you this many times before. You know, I, I'm I'm just pedal to the metal. I'm not sitting back and and um, resting on on any past successes. Um, you know, I, I love sitting back in there in my office and and looking for creative ways that that we can get better and uh, and building the relationships with with all these guys on the team to try to find uh, the right buttons to push to to try to help them become the best they can be on and off the field. So. Um, always appreciative of, of, of the opportunity that I have here and, and going to continue to try to push myself and lead by example um, to, to continue to, to get better and, and find ways to help us be successful because every year is different. And, and uh, I have no idea uh, what this team is, is capable of uh, come August, September, but we got to figure out a way to help them reach their potential. So fired up and excited to see that happen. Pete, after <clears throat> so many special teams plays over the past two years, and they all looked a little different, what percentage of your entire playbook would you say those plays are? Like how many more are there left to do that will catch somebody by surprise? Uh, so it's interesting. We don't hand out a playbook on special teams, and there's a reason for that. And, and the reason is if, if I can't teach them what they need to know in a 20-minute meeting and then with – the 25 or 30 minutes of practice time that we get, then it's too much, right? Because, um, you know, Debo Williams is never going to introduce himself um, as the two on the punt pressure unit, right? He's going to introduce himself as an inside linebacker. Um, so while uh, Debo is, is, is going to take his special team's responsibilities very seriously, um, I don't expect him – to be able to handle as much material as he might have to for Clayton White playing linebacker. So my job is to be able for us to do as much as we need to do to be successful. And a big part of that is being very sound in those unique game situations that might pop up uh, once or twice a season. But when it boils down to it for that one particular player, um, I've got to try and keep it as simple as I can for him because he may have a lot of other things to worry about. So that's kind of the, the big picture of it. And then when you have a system um, and, and the players understand the system, they understand the terminology, they understand sort of why we do what we do, then you can tweak week to week some of the schematics in, in, a, in a modest kind of way to help you get to where you want to go. So it, it might be a kickoff return that is not all that much different than a previous kickoff return, but who you're double teaming might be different. Or, you know, who's um, handling a, a, a certain cover man might be different, but you're really still running the, the same return. Um, so those are the types of things that, that we try to do so that guys don't get to, uh, what, what's, the, what's the analogy, paralysis by analysis, uh, 
which is not something I usually say a whole lot, but I think that's probably a good way to describe it. You, you don't want guys playing slow because they're thinking too much. So, um, so we keep evolving schematically, but um, like to use an offensive analogy, you know, we're not going to go from a pro style offense to uh, running the wishbone the next week when it comes to our schemes on special teams. You guys had a pretty open competition at place kicker last year, kind of up until the season really started. Do you see that job as being more comfortably Mitch's starting this year, or do you see kind of opening it back up again? Yeah, so yes and no. Uh, we're, we're obviously very pleased with what Mitch did last year. He was perfect on field goals, um, improved on kickoffs from the previous season when he was just doing kickoffs and we still had Parker. Um, so it's, it's a balancing act because you, you always want to promote competition, especially this time of year. And, you know, our kickers came out there yesterday and they all looked very good in, in practice one. And I will make sure that um, our second, third and fourth guys get team reps this spring because to me that's about being fair. And, and promoting competition. And you want to see how guys improved in the off season. And you want to make sure that nobody's ever getting too comfortable. Um, but at the same time, I think Mitch is, a, is an even better player when he's more and more confident in himself. And you're seeing that uh, start to happen. Um, and, and you're not going to find a, a harder worker than, than Mitch Jeter. If anything, we got to tell Mitch to take it easy and back off because he will push himself very hard. And I think that goes on the golf course as well as uh, in, in his kicking duties. Hey, Pete. How are you? Um, I'm doing well. How are you doing? Great. I know we talked about this going into last season. We used Nick Muse for the example about having a guy play here and the impact that it can have yeah. in terms of the NFL and raising your draft stock when you play special teams. We saw it with yeah. Kevin Harris as well last year and right. just some of the guys in the league. It's going to help Nate Atkins, of course. And I, I bring that up because last Thursday when these transfers spoke, I know you got excited seeing just some of the things that they were saying, you know, in terms of being here and wanting to be part of special teams. Where is the mindset right now when you just look at the program as a whole? and just the way they value the players and the way they look at special right. teams in comparison to when you guys got here year one. Yeah, it's, it's awesome. Um, and, I, and I say this with all humility, but I feel like special teams has become a big part of our culture. It, it, it reflects our culture. Uh, it's, it's become kind of part of our brand for, for this coaching staff at this university at this point in time. Um, I mean, we have uh, I've countless coaches that want to come visit with us now to, to talk about special teams. Uh, guys asking me all the time to do Zoom calls and things like that. But the real proof is your players. And those guys that went to the Combine uh, a week or two ago, uh, you know, I heard Darius Rush's interview and I couldn't have handed him a piece of paper and say, say this any better than, than what he said to all of those scouts and GMs and coaches about what special teams has done for him and how it helped him get to that combine. Um, and, and he's a smart guy. He's smart enough to know that it's easy to turn on the film and see him making some really impressive plays at Gunner last year and to know what that's going to do to his draft stock. Um, Jalen Brooks sent me a text. He had just gotten out of a meeting, and he said, Coach, this is unbelievable, but I am having more meetings down here with special teams coaches than I am with receiver coaches. So there's, there's a couple of our guys that were in the program for two years compared to the guys a year before that were only with us one, and you look at – how many snaps they played, how they embraced it, the plays they made on special teams, their, their want to in that phase of the game, you know, you saw definite growth from year one to year two. And now to your point, here we are in year three, and we have guys coming here who haven't even stepped foot on the field yet. And they're saying, this is going to be a great place to be because I'm going to get a chance to be a part of this unit. And I think that's just awesome. Um, and, and as a coach, right, there's, 
you want to work with guys that want to be there, that want to do it, that want to be a part of it, um, and, and want to make the team better and make themselves better, right? And so when you have guys that are, are you know, coming out and saying that, that haven't been asked to say that, prompted to say that, um, it, it really just doesn't get any better than that. So I feel like it, it really is coming together. And uh, one of the things you might find interesting, our first special teams meeting in the spring and then again in preseason, we have the whole team in there. So even the Spencer Rattlers of the world are hearing why we do what we do, how we do what we do, the, the language we speak, the expectations. Um, so even if it's just somebody who might be on the hands team, uh, or maybe not even that, um, we still want them to, to take the same amount of pride in, in what we're trying to build here. Uh, you mentioned Gunner a second ago. You're losing some guys there. You mentioned one of them in rush. Kind of where is that position right now? Is there any guys you've been working out there now for such a big part of Kai's punting game? Yeah, Gunner, one of our big goals this spring is to come out of spring practice with a newly revamped depth at Gunner. And uh, our defensive backs, our receivers, even some of our running backs, uh, those guys are all – uh, prime suspects at this point to to help us out there and uh, uh, we we ended up playing some different guys in the bowl game uh, because uh, some of those guys weren't with us then so we got to sort of preview potentially how some guys could be in that bowl game uh, we have obviously some new guys that have joined us as well so we're going to be rotating a lot of skill guys through at those gunner spots this spring and and the goal is to to come out of that spring game with a uh, at least a pretty good idea of where we're at depth wise before we add whoever joins us in the summer Kai's obviously accomplished a lot um, how do you keep him motivated as a coach and did the uh, Ray guy uh, snub last year kind of motivate him some in, in the off season at all. How, how do you how do you sense him attacking this? Yeah, I'm sure it did. You know, Kai's not the kind of guy to uh, to you know woe is me about some something that he knows is not really that important relative to the team winning games. But uh, but I know he was very proud of some of the postseason honors that he earned, and and hopefully there's still some some nice carrots out there for him to, to go after as we, as we uh, go into the next year of his career. But he's also smart enough to know that he's only as good as the rest of the guys on that unit. So it's good to see him working really hard, taking a leadership type approach with our whole team um, to kind of further the goals of the whole team as well as, as our special teams units. He has gotten bigger and stronger. And one of the things that he knows he needs to work on is his hang times. Um, you know, there were some, some really good punts that he had last year that, that maybe were only in that 4-0 range hang time-wise that we'd love to see those hang times get up into, into the mid-fours and, and buy that coverage a little bit more time to get down the field. Um, and then also placement on some punts. Uh, whether we're punting to the field or punting to the boundary or, or whether it's a rugby punt, whatever it might be, um, just his, his accuracy on some of those things. So he's very driven. Uh, he's got a great work ethic, and um, you know, he's excited uh, about what lies ahead, and, and we'll continue to push him. Pete, with Spencer being in special teams meetings, are we going to see him on like hands team or something like that? Well, if, if, if the head coach will let him be on there, I'll gladly take him. But, uh, no, we, you know, look, when it, when it comes to your roster, and this is where it's great to have somebody like Shane who understands my role and, and my job, um, you know, you, you've got to look for creative ways to get the job done. And uh, if some of you, I'm sure, noticed that Luke Doty was playing special teams for us in the bowl game. And uh, at that point, you know, he, he had the game to give. Um, and, you know, where our roster was at at that point, we're like, you know, we got a couple weeks here. Let's get Luke ready to do some things. And he was obviously very, very willing to do that. So um, it's great to work uh, with a group of coaches and a group of players who 
you know, want to do whatever it takes to win games. And, uh, you know, I always try to uh, put, put my head coach hat back on and not be unreasonable about something when it doesn't make sense uh, in terms of the team being successful. But if something does make sense, then I've got to be willing to bring that up in staff meetings and say, hey, how about this guy? You know, if, if, if it's not going to hurt us somewhere else, can we use him um, if he's the best available guy to get the job done? So uh, that was certainly the case with Luke in the, in the bowl game. And, you know, we'll continue to evaluate the entire roster um, in every nook and cranny of it and, and try to find roles for guys. Because if there's something else that somebody can do, even if it's just four or five plays, right, they're going to be more engaged. They're going to be more involved. They're going to be more invested in what we're doing. And, and again, you know, we want to be uh, inclusive, not exclusive with what we're doing, whenever it's within reason. Thank you, Coach. All right, guys. Great seeing everybody. Thanks so much.